Um, yo, hello everyone, this is me again. Uh, so this is gonna be uh, What If Naruto Was Raised at Mount Miyaboku Part uh, Part 3. Yeah, Part 3 I think. So uh, last time I left off when uh, Zabuza, when the Team 3 finished the Zabuza mission along with Team 7 I think. And they came back and Naruto without wasting time told uh, his team, which is Karin, Neji, and Rock Lee, he told them about uh, the Chunin exams, and he told them to study, so they did that. And uh, I'm gonna skip over to the day of the Chunin exam when it starts. So, yada yada yada, so on, they go, they go in, they go into the room, they see the Genjutsu of course, Neji's too good for that, come on. Neji, Neji was a bit of a prick at the beginning of the show, but... Yeah, come on, he won't fall for that. Neither will Karin, and neither will... I mean, Rock Lee doesn't see Chakra, because he doesn't have it. But still, he can see that something's wrong. Um, yeah, they come in, they give the test. Nobody really needs help, because they studied. And the tenth question, uh, they don't leave, because... They figured it out by now, and that is to test their courage and stuff like that. And then, uh, Ibiki is like, well, um, he should be here any moment. And they're like, and everybody is like, who? And, they're, and Ibiki says, well, the proctor for the second round of the tuning exams, of course. And then, a break comes through a window. And everybody's like, what? And then, a boy about their age... With yellow hair, with yellow hair, and uh, with yellow hair, and uh, in a ponytail and a robe, somewhat uh, sky blue eyes, brown shinobi shoes, and fishnet shirt, just coming through the window with a smile, with a giant smile on his face, with a giant grin on his face. Basically, looks like a fox, <laughs> a fox grin. Yeah, and he's like. Hello, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Uh, I don't want to hear your questions, but I'm going to be the proxy for the second exam. Everybody come tomorrow at 10 a.m. to the Forest of Death, training ground 43. And he's like, no questions, no answers. Goodbye, see you later. And he disappears in the poof. And Ibiki's like, ugh, oh, this kid. And everybody in the room is just starting to like freak out, like, what the heck is a kid our age doing at the tuning exams? And they ask Ibiki, and Ibiki says, Well, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but basically... He's one of the strongest ninjas in, the Kona, in Konoha right now. Yeah, he beat the Hokage in like the first 10 seconds of the round. So he's insanely strong, he's an elite, elite Jonin of the Leaf Village. And yeah, he is 12, apparently. Yeah. Well, go kids, tomorrow is the second round. Everybody leaves, like, la la la. And, uh, something that, uh, I forgot to mention is that when all the teams met Kabuto, Sasuke, and, uh, Sasuke, and uh, Gara actually, they both asked for um, for information on Naruto Uzumaki, and Kabut is like, "Oh, you want information about that guy?" And he whips out a card and says, "Well, Naruto Uzumaki, apparently a Toad Sage, wielder of the bow staff, shinobi of rank double S, maybe triple S soon, twelve years old." He tells them about his appearance and stuff like that, and uh, he tells them that he's done a few S he's done a few S rank missions there and then he's done a lot of A ranks and B ranks and no C ranks and D ranks at all. Well, the C rank, which was bumped up to A rank recently, but they don't mind that. So the other day, and everybody was shocked when they told him that information and like, is he that strong to be an elite Jonin? At this age, and Kyle was like, "Yeah, he is insanely strong. Don't know how, but he is." 
and everybody goes, and the, the whole thing goes, they meet Naruto, and, uh, yeah, the next day comes, and everybody is at training ground 40. And then Naruto just falls out of a tree, hitting his head, and people see that he was holding that he was holding that he that a book fell out of his hands, and uh, a pencil, and Karin walks over with like an angry face, and he's like, "What the heck are you doing, Naruto?" He's like, and Naruto just stands up and he's like, uh, 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 "Naruto sensei to you," and uh, she, Karin tries to pick up his book, but Naruto just. Sprit just blitzes on her and snatches the book and he's like, not yet, Kari, not yet. And plus, it's not for you. Or maybe it is, you never know. You might like it. Soon. Now, yeah. And he's like, what the heck are you, have you been doing all these days? Are you writing a book? You're not, you're not that of a nerd. He's like, oh, offended. Well, I won't tell you what I'm doing with this book now. But let's start the second the second part of the tuning exams, everybody. Now listen up, kiddos. Uh, I know I might not look that intimidating, but trust me, I'm strong. At least I, ho I, I like to think I am. Now, I want you all to sign these papers. And, and some kids ask, why? What's up? And he's like, well, if you die in there, that just not that. It just, those papers just say that, well, it's not the leaf's fault, so... Yeah, you gotta have to deal with that. And he explains to them about the scrolls, and the exam begins. Now, in the f now, before everybody goes into the gates, Naruto, Naruto grabs the not grabs, puts his hand on the on the grass shinobi's uh, shoulder, and he was like, "Well, well, well, Snakey, who do we have? Who do we see here?" Now, I don't know what your plans are, but if you dare attack the village, I will come after you and kill everyone you know. And Orochimaru is pissed. He's like, God damn it. And now he says, I'm not gonna let you get in there. Now, come with me, Orochimaru, come with me. And Orochimaru says, heck no. And he just disappears. And I was just like, ah, let him get away. I was too relaxed thinking about my masterpiece. Not gonna tell you what the masterpiece is yet, but soon. It's not gonna be a big reveal, but it was a nice little thing I wanted to add. Um, so, the tuning exams go as canon, but this time, uh, Sasuke doesn't get curse marked, and nobody gets hurt from Orochimaru. Yeah, that happens. This, this sound trio still still gets beaten up by Sasuke, but this time not because of the curse mark, but because they hurt Sakura. Yeah. And stuff like that. I don't remember who I put on their team. I think it was uh, Konohamaru, maybe? No, I don't remember whose team it was. But, that said, the third preliminaries begin, and Naruto's standing there with Hiruzen. And Naruto, uh... And the other proctor just says the rounds. And um, the first round is Karin versus Kiba. Now, Kiba is like, huh, I'm gonna beat you. Me and Akamaru are the strongest. And she's like, oh boy, we got one of those again. And uh, Karin doesn't even wait for Kiba to start. She just blitzes at him with pretty high speeds because Karin's been training with Naruto. And she blitzes at him with high speeds. She doesn't have her chakra chains yet, but she's close to unlocking them, I say. She's gonna be pretty powerful. She blitzes at Kiba and uh, goes into Taijutsu battle close range, so Akamaru, Kiba's dog, can't have a chance to get into the battle. And she just beats up Kiba, like, pure, just beats him up like a bully at school, you know, like, just sucker punches him there and then. Until Kiba has, like, swollen face and everything, and he's like, He's like, mumbles, I'm sorry, I give up. <laughs> and the, the proctor's like, well, Karin Uzumaki wins. And um, Karin looks at Naruto, and Naruto just grins and like puts his thumb up and says, good job. Um, next fight is Neji versus Hinata. Now, Naruto has noticed Neji's hatred for the main branch. 
and he's like, before before Neji goes down the ring, Naruto tells Neji that um, don't take all of your anger out on her. I don't think she's the one at fault. Although give her a bit of a get her give her a bit of a wake up call that she needs to get herself together as the next clan leader. And Neji says, sure, Sensei. And so the fight goes as canon, but Neji doesn't try to kill her. He just beats her up and tells her that there's no way that person like you can become our clan leader at this point in time. If you don't get stronger, Hinata, I'm going to make sure that I'm the next clan head and that the clan will be in good hands if you don't get strong. And this hits Hinata, so from now she's going to make it a personal goal to become stronger than Neji and prove to him that she's a worthy clan head. So, good character development. Very good character development. And, um, next fight is Gara versus Rock Lee. Now, because Rock Lee has trained both with Guy and Naruto, Na Na Rock Lee comes there with a, sp uh, with a staff, a bow staff. And Guy, who's actually standing next to Naruto, is like, um, hey, Naruto, did you teach my youthful student how to use a weapon? And Naruto says, yeah, Guy, I did. He's pretty good at it. It fits him. Although his jumpsuit, yeah, we're gonna have to do something about that. But it, 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 fine. Well, he'll keep it for now. I allow it. And guy's like, yes, very youthful Naruto, very youthful. And back at the arena, Lee is just looking at Gara, puts the staff into, goes into a stance, and says, "Let's have a youthful battle, my friend." And Gara hears this, and he just gets like a tick mark on his forehead. He's like, "Friend," he just called me friend. And um, when Gara's thinking about this, Lee just blitzes already. And I'll say that his speed with weights has increased by a bit. Not... Yeah, it increases, so it, it catches him off guard, but still doesn't penetrate him. They fight. Gara um, Lee manages to land a few hits there and then, but nothing too serious. Until he looks up at Naruto and Guy. Ask, like with a look asking for permission and Naruto and Guy at the same time raise their thumbs up and say yes Lee and Lee just smiles and takes off his weights and the whole cool weights falling thing goes off and uh, yeah basically uh, Lee gets much closer to beating Gara this time and Garrett almost went out of control. Actually, no, I don't remember. Okay, Garrett doesn't get out of control. Uh, flashback. Naruto's Naruto is walking with his team, and uh, they just see this random kid. These th two sand shinobi, one with a black costume and paint war paint. And a girl with a fan, and picking on a guy, picking on a boy, who's from a pretty, pretty influential family, and they're like, and they're just like, oh god, those shinobi don't know where they are probably. So he goes up to them, and says, uh, hey, please let the boy go. He's from a very influential family. Wouldn't want to get you two. Wouldn't want to get you three into trouble. And Gar is listening. To, he said, these three? Did he sense me? And Naruto says, hey, One Tails, you can come out. I want to have a little talk with you. And Gar is like, huh, he probably's going to call me a monster. I'll kill him there and then. And uh, Naruto says, hey, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. Nice to meet you. Uh, could you take my hand for a second? There's something I need you to do. And Gar is like, sure. So Naruto takes his hand and not take his hand like that. Actually, no, he touches his forehead. And they go into Gara's mindscape, and Naruto says, Hey, Shukaku. Actually, I'm not sure if Naruto has been fr has made friends with Kurama. I'll say that... No, not yet. But Naruto... Actually, Naruto has talked to Kurama, 
and Kurama doesn't like Naruto right now, but he's but he's like he tolerates him, and he's like Naruto going to his mindscape. There's something I need to talk with that damn Tanuki. And Naruto's like, oh, so that's the One Tails, and so he goes in and is like, hey Shikaku, could you not bother the, bother the kid? Wouldn't want to go. You wouldn't want you to go rampage on the village, and Shikaku's like, how dare you talk like that to me? I'm the great One Tails. And now it says, and uh, I got the great nine tails, you know. It's, multi it's you multiplied by nine, so you better keep quiet, or else we're g I'm gonna rip you to shreds. And this just shuts up Shukaku, and yeah, he doesn't bother. So back to the current time. Gara, st Gara still beats uh, Lee. Gara still beats Lee and stuff like that. But not going to kill him, but guys, since he doesn't have to get in there and help. So everything goes fine, and then everything goes to scale. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, now we skip to the one month of training. And during this time, uh, Naruto, as Naruto asks Guy and uh, Takashi for some help. Now... He asks Guy to train, to train uh, Karin in Taijutsu because it needs a bit of work, and Karin is like, sure. I'll, um, and they went off with Guy. Now he asks Kakashi to train Neji using some lightning style techniques and also work on his uh, chakra control and uh, Byakugan too. And Kakashi's like, sure, I guess. And they go off with that, and. Um, Naruto trains Rock Lee on using the bow staff and improving his reflexes and overall taijutsu skills and uh, Lee manages to get to the fifth gate during this time which is pretty impressive I think yeah I'm not gonna give him the sixth gate yet it's overpowered mm, yeah that happens and uh, the The finals begin, and uh, before they start, Naruto heads up to the Hoka. Actually, time time skip. Uh, right after the second exam finished, Naruto went to the Hokage and told them that Orochimaru was in town, and that he's probably planning an attack on Konoha. And um, he says to watch out for uh, Sound and Sand Shinobi, and he says. Watch out for the Kazekage. I have a weird feeling about him. I managed to make the deal. I managed to make a deal with the One Tails, so he won't go rampaging. But still, be careful. And so now, back to current time. The defenses around the stadium and our whole village are multiplied by triple, basically. Because the Hokage trusts Naruto a lot. So yeah. He does that. So everything goes normally. And uh, the first fight is actually Karin versus Neji. Now, this can be a pretty interesting fight because Neji is a lot stronger now. He can use lightning hounds, lightning stream, he can channel some lightning through his kunais and stuff like that. Uh, he can't use Chidori because remember, he doesn't have the Sharing Gun. Although, I don't know if he could use it with a Byakugan, but I'll say that Sasuke trains with them and he learns the Chidori, right? And Karin is a lot better at Taijutsu. I'll say right now it's... Yeah, she's just gotten better. I can't rank it. So that happens, and... Uh... Yeah, so they get into a fighting stance. They like smile because they're teammates, you no know, grudges. And uh, they both blitz at each other at the same time. They get into a heated Taijutsu battle, which is super satisfying. Blow for blow. Nobody can land a clear hit. Until Neji manages to block one of Karin's chakra points, which is very important to use jutsus. And now Karin can only use uh, Earth style techniques, which is her. Weakest. I don't remember what, what elements, 
what Chakra Nature's Karin has, but I think. Yeah, I don't remember how what Chakra Nature she has, but she has fire, wind, fire, water, and earth, I will say. And earth is her weakest, so now she can only use that. And Karin already foresaw that, so she trained a bit in earth style by herself. And she says, uh, she, she does a few hand signs that says earth style, earth spikes. And earth spikes come from the earth and try to impale Neji, but Neji just dodges or destroys the things themselves. And he just blitzes towards Karin at insane speeds, which, which she just didn't expect. And he just starts blocking more of her chakra points until all of them are blocked. And Karin can, can't use any more chakra, right? So she can only use Taijutsu. Now, Karin's pretty much like out of hope right now, but she just, yeah, she just gives up because she does, she can't do anything. T Neji's still better at Taijutsu, but it was a good fight. Everybody enjoyed it. It was very cool. And uh, Naruto's proud of his students, like, yes, Guy and Kakashi trained them well. I'm proud of myself for some reason and them. Um, very nice, very nice. And inside his head, he says, that's the power of youth. And he's, he just realized what he said, and he's like, oh no, oh no, what's gonna come next? Am I gonna start wearing orange jumpsuits? No, uh, green jumpsuits? Oh no. And he just starts panicking, and Kakashi is like, yo, Naruto, what's wrong? And Naruto says, I'm turning into youthful, I'm, I'm turning into a youthful person. And Kakashi is like, oh... I can't help you there. You're just gonna have to deal with it. It's very hard to get over. And then just please help Kakashi. A uh, little, little, little bit of karmic relief. But uh, now we go into uh, Sasuke versus uh, yeah, Sasuke versus Gara. And this time, uh, I'm not gonna go into the fight because it's gonna be difficult to explain. Because Gara just blocks everything. Shukaku doesn't get out of control, but I'll say that there was a giant explosion at one point, and that's when the sound and the uh, sand shinobi attacked. But everybody was expecting this, all the Jonin and Chunin already knew about this. So they were prepared. They killed off all of the sound shinobi immediately, and the sound shinobi were taken care of pretty easily because they were they didn't expect Konoha to know. And Orochimaru is like, damn it. I thought maybe that kid was bluffing when he said he saw me. But no, he told everything to that old geezer. So, he just went to the third Hokage and stuff like that. And uh, started fighting him. And the whole fight happens. But Naruto comes in time comes in time to save the day. Well, when Hiruzen was about to get impaled and stuff like that. Naruto just throws his staff at Orochimaru and... The staff hits Orochimaru in the face, like, making him spit out some s spit, you know. And he just goes into Taijutsu and then spits out a fireball, a giant one. Fireball, and then imbues that with uh, a wind one. And the whole thing is pretty, pretty dangerous. And he goes under under the roof and does a Henhado Jutsu with the bricks and stuff like that. And he just basically almost tries to slice Orochimaru's head off with... Uh, not not slice it, but stab it with the chakra rod that he just created. But Orochimaru uh, somehow escaped. No, don't ask me how how Orochimaru knows how to escape. So that that whole thing happens, and uh, Hiruzen says, oh, "We're gonna have to find a new Hokage pretty soon, but not at the moment. I need to deal with some stuff right now in the village." And uh, the whole thing happens now. People. Don't get really to get tuning, but um, I'll say it and then that here, the people that got promoted to tuning were uh, were they were uh, Shikamaru. Okay, I'll just say that Shikamaru's fight also happened. Everything ends in canon. Basically, all the fights are in canon. Shikamaru gets promoted to tuning. Uh, Gara gets promoted to tuning, uh, Neji gets promoted to tuning, and I'll say Karin gets promoted to tuning also because why not? She she put up a very good fight against Neji, 
who is, I think he's about like low to mid Jonin rank in strength in all of the areas except for Taijutsu. There he's a uh, high Jonin. But he's still not the age of a Jonin, so he just needs more experience and then he'll just be a Jonin and stuff like that. So a month passes, training goes by. Not a month, I'll say two weeks pass, training and stuff like that. And one day, Naruto gather, gathers his team and tells them that, Yo team, it's finally time for me to reveal to you my masterpiece. The first one. And Karin's like, oh, what is it again? Uh, so, so, some stupid essay you wrote. Some stupid work you wrote. And Naruto's like, well, I'm a bit offended by your words, Karin, but yes, I did write something, and it's actually a novel. It's just the first part out of many, but it's a novel talking about ninjas, fun battles, and um, women, you know, those scenes. And Karin's like, how? Why? But now it's like, I know some of you might not like that I like this stuff, but I do. So, just take the book, give it to your friends, or read it by yourselves. It's, it's, it's my little present to y'all for working this hard. And I worked hard on this book, so just enjoy it. And now I to give, give a few copies to the librarian, to the librarian, to the publisher. And I want to give one to Kakashi and uh, Jiraiya. Now, this happens, and... Naruto gave it to the librarian, the librarian looked at Naruto, read over a few pages of the book, looked at Naruto again, and he's like, look kid, this book's amazing, very nice story, although you're a bit underage to be knowing about this stuff, and Naruto's like, yeah, I know, but I, I, I worked hard on this, could you think about maybe publishing it? But please under my name, because I, I I want to be recognized as a writer, maybe. And librarian was like, uh, sure, yeah, I could do that. We're gonna go. We're not. We're gonna mass produce it when we get feedback from customers, from readers. But the only thing we're not gonna include is your age, because I don't think readers would want to read something from a twelve-year-old. And I was like, true, true that, true that. Thanks. And he, then he gives it to Kakashi, and Kakashi looks over a few pages, and he's like, Naruto, I will cherish this. This will be in my heart forever. I shall burn the images of the pages into my eyes forever. This is brilliant. This could even rival Master, this could even rival Jirai, Lord Jiraiya's books. Amazing, amazing. And um, as soon as Naruto wanted to go find Jiraiya, who was pretty, who's somewhere outside of the village right now, a toad arrives, all panting and stuff, and Naruto's like, yo, toad, with a mm -hmm. name, and he's like, Ma Lord Naruto, Naruto-sama, Mount Miyaboku has just been attacked by the snakes from Ryuchi Cave, and a strange man who claims to be Orochimaru, please, Matt Miyaboku really needs your help. Lord, Lord, Lord Jiraiya has also been sent an urgent message. And uh, Naruto's like, okay, coming right now. And he de-summoned himself, summoned himself, reverse summoned himself to Mount Miyaboku and saw giant snakes wrecking the buildings there, wrecking the toads, giant toads fighting the giant snakes. And uh, or he saw a few snakes falling in the distance and uh, he saw Jiraiya fighting. And he's like, yes, okay, Jiraiya is here, so we still have hope. But then he sees a giant three-headed purple snake in front of him with a man who was Orochimaru on top of the head. And he's like, Orochimaru, you snake. And uh, the reason Orochimaru attacked Mount Miyaboko was because he was pissed. He was pissed. He wanted to destroy Konoha for good and kill the third, but he didn't get anywhere. He only lost good men. He's like, I'll destroy that toad. And, yeah. The, the snakes don't like toads, so they like, yeah, let's do it. Let's wreck them. And they started attacking. So, Orochimaru comes down, 
and starts fighting with Naruto. But I'll say that during these two weeks, Orochimaru has done, enhanced himself a bit with experiments. So now he's a lot stronger. So Naruto is going to have a bit of trouble with Orochimaru. But the thing is that um, there are a lot of snakes and everywhere. Naruto's main priority isn't Orochimaru. It's to save the toad and prevent more of Mount Miyaboku getting destroyed. So, so he, he tries to focus on saving instead of fighting Orochimaru, but he can't do two at the same time. So at one point, after Naruto let his guard down to try to save a toad who was about to get swallowed up by a snake, Orochimaru took the Kusanagi, blade of Kusanagi, I think that's how it's called. He took that thing, that blade, out of his mouth and uh, he just pierced it through Naruto's chest. Not not chest, uh, I'll say stomach. It hit his lung too. And Naruto couldn't do anything about that. Yeah, Naruto's down. He, he's not dead, he's just... Mm, yeah. And... Jirai is close by and he sees this and he sees his student almost like his son fall down almost lifeless and he's like no and he just and Orochimaru is like <laughs> and he's about to go away but Jirai blitzes out and Saint speeds at Orochimaru and he does a few seal hand signs and using a uh, forbidden seal, which is not the Reaper Death Seal, it's another seal equal to power, but that requires a lot more chakra. I'll say that Jiraiya has a lot left because the snakes weren't much of a problem. And he just seals seals Orochimaru's hands away, which basically gives the same result as in canon. But not the Reaper Death Seal, Jiraiya is still alive. So the snakes retreat. They Nobody won, nobody lost. It was a draw. Everybody, both both sides lost a lot of members, you know. But Mami Boko was pretty destroyed. And uh, Jirai and the Toads go to Naruto. They gather around him. And one Toad checks for his pulse. And everybody's already mourning. But then he says, he's still alive. But barely. Jirai, you need to get him to the Leaf Village right now. And you need to find Tsunade. And, um... Uh, uh, Jirai desummons himself to the leaf village in the middle of the village and at this time Everybody's wondering where Naruto went all of a sudden and Kakashi says that something urgent came up and they were all and uh, a group of Sasuke, Sakura, Konohamaru, Neji, Karin, Rock Lee, Guy uh, and Kakashi are walking in the center just talking about training and life and how Naruto's cool, and about this book, right? And the power of youth, because Guy and Lee are there. And then they just see, in the middle of a village, and then they just see, like, almost very close by them in the square, a, a man appear, which was Jiraiya, and Naruto on his arms, almost lifeless, with a blade in his, che in his chest area. And they all rush and say, what happened? And Jiraiya, almost in tears, says, we need to get up to a hospital now. You guys take him. I'll go find Tsunade. This is bad. And they're like, what happened? And he's like, he, Jirai can't speak properly. He's he's like shock. He's in shock. And he's like, Orochimaru attacked Mount Miyaboku. And we we tried to fend him off. We, we did. Naruto fought as best as he could. But Orochimaru was too strong at that point. Naruto was caught off guard. And they're like, we understand. We'll take him. And uh, they take him to the hospital. Lord Third was informed, and he's like, "Oh no! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! We can't let him die." And so Jiraiya quickly goes around the land of fire, and a spy network gives him the information on J Tsunade's whereabouts. And Jiraiya finds Tsunade, and uh, he finds Tsunade, and he's like, "Please, Tsunade, return to the village. My student needs you." Orochimaru, he attacked Mount Yuboku, and Naruto was caught off guard, and Tsunade is like, huh, then your student must be pretty pathetic to lose to that snake, and Jiraiya just snapped, he hit his hand on the table, 
breaking it, making a crack on the floor and the roof also cracked and the walls also. And he's like, don't you dare. He protected me, the toads and everyone there from that damn snake and his followers. And Tsunade is like, don't you dare shout at me and don't you dare hit anything in front of me. And they start like bickering and he's like, please Tsunade, my student needs you. And Tsunade says, Jiraiya, I will. And that's where I'm going to leave it off. Because, yeah, because it's a cliffhanger. I want to do a cliffhanger. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell me what you think about this episode and if I should continue it. And also tell me about the snake signing one. The snake signing what if, because that one got a lot of views, but there was some negative feedback on uh, on my mail and stuff like that. But tell me what you think about it in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe if you want. And uh, thanks for watching. More, more what ifs coming soon.